Hey guys, Rendon here with TJ Free. In this video, I want to talk about a Raspberry Pi 4 as a car dash cam. So this case has a built-in camera. This is that case starter kit by Labis that I covered a couple weeks ago. And it's a really good starter kit if you want to do a project that involves a camera because it has a built-in spot for uh, the Pi camera uh, module, which is really cool. It's also using the Coro uh, USB accelerator um, to get extra processing. So, um, oh yeah, so this is a, not just a dash cam, it's actually gonna be using uh, AI and machine learning to do object detection in real time. So I get about 20 frames per second. Uh, we're gonna hook this up and do some driving around and see how it looks. So I'm just gonna plug this in. Um, kind of the cables we have here are a USB cable to power. And then I'm hooking it up to an external monitor that I have right here. And so this is just a little screen. It's actually um, higher than 1080p, it's like 1440. Anyway, this is the monitor we're using. So this also is powered by the USB, uh, by a USB cord, then it uses a HDMI cable to connect in. And I'm just using like a Logitech keyboard uh, trackpad in one, so I can talk to the Raspberry Pi that way. And then it has just a little like USB um, receiver here for that. Uh, I also have another camera that I'm testing out so that I can get 1080p. So this camera is only 720p and it's not working I'm not really pleased with it, so I'm going to see tonight if this one does any better. So let's take a look. I used this cheap suction cup camera mount to hook the entire Raspberry Pi to the windshield. And the software running on this is called TensorFlow Lite, and it's using a pre-trained model right now. So I didn't actually train it, but you can see it draws this green box around these objects. Then it also has a percentage, like a uh, uh, how sure it is that that object is what it thinks it is. So in this case, we're seeing, you know, a lot of cars here, 75%, 50%, 80% certain that that's what it is. Even when the object is partly um, uh, obscured or, or covered up, if it can only see part of the object, it can still do a pretty good job of detecting it. We can see some traffic lights being detected here. Uh, and even with the higher speeds uh, of vehicles moving, look at these pedestrians on the side here. So it says a person walking on the side, you know, 70% sure it's a person, even though it's only seeing it for a split second. And if you look up in the top left-hand corner, it shows the FPS. So right now this is 21, about 20 frames per second. So that means every second it's processing 20 times um, what it's seeing in the images. Um, which is pretty cool. And again, that's because I'm using this uh, Coral USB accelerator. And I'll talk more about that in the end of this video um, and give you some instructions on how to go about setting this up if you want to do it for yourself. But I've been really impressed with this. Uh, it's been a fun little project. Um, you can also feed video into this. So if you already have dash cam footage, um, but you didn't have um, TensorFlow running on a, a, a device, you can actually feed video footage into this after the fact. Um, it wouldn't be real time, but you can still do object detection using TensorFlow Lite um, uh, just on any any regular video. But this is just really cool, I think, that you can do it in real time. Here's a guy on a skateboard. I'll slow it down, and we can see this person, 91, 95% sure it's a person on a skateboard. And we're moving, he's moving, but it's still able to, to accurately detect. Um, in a minute here, we'll take a look at something other than driving and just so, show some of the objects that I was able to get it to detect accurately. Um, but uh, you see this is just mostly cars and traffic lights when you're out driving. You'll notice it, it only does so many boxes. Um, I think it does uh, maybe 15 or so, 15 or 16 boxes it kind of maxes out at. Maybe that's a setting you can get in and change, uh, but uh, it only has so much capacity to process. So here's another video just sitting at my desk. We can see a book and a, a mug or a cup here. It detects the keyboard. Again, even only seeing part of the object, it can detect it. I put a banana here for it to detect the cell phone. And now it thinks my mouse here is a vase um, or a suitcase it thought for a second. And if we look here, we can see like just like objects around the house couch. It thinks this ottoman's a suitcase. Um, I'll show you, uh, without using this Coral USB accelerator, it's much, much, much slower. So this is my first um, test with TensorFlow Lite. This is on a Raspberry Pi 3 without the accelerator. Notice we're getting like, 0.94 frames per second so less than one frame per second so it's very 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 choppy so this is actually pretty cpu intensive and that accelerator helps a lot um, so using the, the raspberry pi 4 with the accelerator we're getting 20 times uh, this processing speed um, so it does make a big difference if you want to set something like this up yourself i'm going to recommend that you use this edge electronics 
um, guide on GitHub. This guy does a great job. He's actually my neighbor to the north up in Montana. and He's done a great, great job of just documenting how to get this up and running on the Raspberry Pi. Um, he, and he talks about using the accelerator. This is the instructions that I used. And so I really appreciate him sharing this information. And I would recommend uh, that you just use this. He has a step-by-step -step guide. You can just copy and paste the instructions. I hope you found this video informative and that it's been interesting to you. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any. And definitely check out um, Edge Electronics for more details about this um, and probably asking more advanced questions there um, to get better answers. But uh, as always, thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you in the next video.